A millionaire adopts a homeless black girl who's seen the darkest days of struggle. But six years later, she repays him in a way that leaves everyone speechless. What could she possibly do to transform his life so dramatically? And how does he react to this life-changing moment? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Jonathan Walker's polished Italian leather shoes crunched against the sun-warmed gravel as he stepped out of his Mercedes. The afternoon sunlight caught the silver at his temples, highlighting the gentle smile that crossed his face as he gazed up at the red brick building before him. The local orphanage wasn't fancy, but it was well-maintained, with cheerful yellow curtains in the windows and carefully tended flower beds lining the walkway. It's a beautiful day for this, Eleanor said softly coming to stand beside him. Her cream-colored dress suited the warmth of the afternoon, and her eyes sparkled with the same excitement he felt. She squeezed his hand, a gesture that spoke volumes about their shared purpose. From the back seat came the unmistakable sound of teenage huffing. Jonathan glanced through the car window at his sons, Nathan and Lucas, who sat with their arms crossed tightly over their chests. Their matching scowls would have been almost comical if they weren't so disappointing. Boys, Jonathan called, leaning down to peer through the window. Come on in with us. This is important. Important to who? Nathan muttered, not even bothering to look at his father. At 17, he had perfected the art of teenage disdain. We didn't ask to spend our Saturday at some dirty orphanage. Lucas, ever following his older brother's lead, added, Yeah, Dad, this is so boring. Can't we just wait in the car? Eleanor's face fell slightly and Jonathan felt a familiar ache in his chest. These weren't the values they'd tried to instill in their sons. Where had they gone wrong? It wouldn't hurt you to show a little compassion, Jonathan said, trying to keep his voice steady. These children don't need us gawking at them like they're in a zoo, Nathan cut in, finally turning to face his father with a challenging stare. Jonathan straightened up, adjusting his tie as he collected himself. Eleanor, dear, he said quietly. Maybe we should just let them stay in the car. His wife touched his arm gently. They're missing out on something special, she whispered, loud enough for the boys to hear. But we can't force them to understand that. Jonathan nodded, then leaned down one more time to address his sons. Fine, you can stay here. But behave yourselves, understood? This is important to your mother and me. The boys responded with dismissive grunts, already pulling out their phones. As Jonathan and Eleanor walked up the flower-lined path to the orphanage's entrance, he couldn't help but glance back at the car. Through the tinted windows, he could see Nathan and Lucas exchanging self-satisfied smirks, clearly pleased with their small act of rebellion. Don't let it spoil this moment, Eleanor said, reading his thoughts as she often did. We're here to do something good. Jonathan squared his shoulders and nodded. She was right, of course. The sound of children's laughter drifted through the building's open windows, a cheerful chorus that helped lift his spirits. As they reached the heavy wooden doors, a smiling staff member appeared to greet them. Mr. and Mrs. Walker, we're so pleased to have you here today, she said warmly, holding the door open. The sounds of playing children grew louder, echoing down the hallway behind her. As they stepped inside, Jonathan cast one final glance at the car, where his sons continued to slouch in the back seat, their faces illuminated by their phone screens. He sighed quietly, then turned to follow the staff member into the building, Eleanor's hand steady and warm in his own. The orphanage's interior was a stark contrast to its modest exterior. Warm yellow walls decorated with children's artwork created an inviting atmosphere despite the well-worn furniture and dated fixtures. The sound of small feet pattering against wooden floors and high-pitched giggles echoed through the corridors as Jonathan and Eleanor followed Mrs. Jennings. We try to make it as homey as possible, Mrs. Jennings explained, her gray hair neatly pulled back in a bun. Deep laugh lines creased her face as she smiled, though a hint of exhaustion lingered in her eyes. The children are so excited about your visit, we don't get many visitors bearing gifts. They entered a large common room where at least 20 children of various ages were gathered. Some played with worn board games while others huddled around books with missing covers. 
The moment the children spotted the colorful gift bags Jonathan and Eleanor carried, their eyes lit up like Christmas lights. Children, Mrs. Jennings called out, clapping her hands. Mr. and Mrs. Walker have brought some special things to share with you today. The response was immediate. Little faces turned toward them, bright with anticipation. Jonathan felt his heart swell as he watched Eleanor begin pulling items from the first bag. She handled each gift with care, as if it were made of gold, making every child feel special as she presented them with their surprise. Look at this lovely purple sweater, Eleanor said to a small girl with pigtails. I think it would match your eyes perfectly. The child's face broke into a gap-toothed grin as she hugged the soft fabric to her chest. Jonathan joined in, distributing toy cars, stuffed animals, and books. Each time he handed something to a child, their eyes would grow wide with wonder. Some of the younger ones threw their arms around his legs in spontaneous hugs, while the older children offered shy thank yous that seemed to come straight from their hearts. This is incredible, one little boy exclaimed, carefully opening a new set of colored pencils. I can draw so many pictures now. The joy in the room was almost tangible, floating through the air like invisible confetti. But as Eleanor handed out the last few items from her bag, something caught her eye. In the far corner of the room, partially hidden behind a bookshelf, stood a solitary figure. The girl looked to be about ten years old with dark skin and hair styled in neat braids. She wore a faded blue dress that hung slightly too large on her thin frame. In her arms, she clutched a well-loved stuffed rabbit, its fur matted and one ear slightly torn. Unlike the other children who were excitedly showing each other their gifts, this child remained apart, her eyes fixed on the floor as if she were trying to make herself invisible. Eleanor nudged Jonathan gently, directing his attention to the corner. His smile faded slightly as he observed the lonely figure. The girl's isolation was striking amid the joyful chaos around them. Mrs. Jennings was helping a young boy open a package of socks when Eleanor touched her arm. Mrs. Jennings, she said softly, her eyes still on the solitary child. Who is she? The caretaker's warm smile dimmed as she followed Eleanor's gaze. Jonathan stepped closer, leaning in to hear the response, his heart already aching for the story that had put such sadness in the little girl's eyes. Mrs. Jennings let out a soft sigh, her eyes filled with a mixture of tenderness and concern as she glanced at Maya. The girl shifted uncomfortably under their attention, her small fingers tightening around her stuffed rabbit. That's Maya, Mrs. Jennings began, her voice dropping to barely above a whisper. She's been with us since she was just a baby, left on our doorstep one cold winter morning. She paused, watching as Maya pretended to be absorbed in adjusting her rabbit's floppy ear. She's such a sweet child, bright, helpful, always looking after the younger ones. But, Mrs. Jennings's voice trailed off. But what? Eleanor prompted gently, though the pain in her eyes suggested she already knew the answer. Most families that come through here, they're looking for babies or toddlers. And, Mrs. Jennings hesitated, choosing her words carefully. Well, some have certain preferences about appearance. Maya's age and skin color seem to work against her though she's one of the most wonderful children I've ever had the privilege to care for. Jonathan's face grew increasingly serious as he listened. His jaw tightened slightly and a shadow passed over his features. The thought of a child being overlooked for such shallow reasons stirred something deep within him. The other children, Mrs. Jennings continued, her voice heavy with sadness. They can be cruel sometimes. You know how kids can be. They tease her for being different for still being here after so long. She tries not to show it, but I know it hurts her deeply. Eleanor blinked rapidly, trying to hold back the tears that threatened to spill. She looked again at Maya, who chose that moment to glance up. Their eyes met briefly, Maya's dark brown eyes holding a depth of emotion that no child should have to carry. In that fleeting moment, Eleanor saw both hope and resignation, a silent acceptance of disappointment that broke her heart. Maya quickly looked away, busying herself with straightening her rabbit's worn bow tie. She's learned to keep to herself, Mrs. Jennings added softly. She helps me with the younger children, reads to them, comforts them when they're sad. She's got such a beautiful heart, despite everything. 
Jonathan listened intently, his hand unconsciously reaching for Eleanor's. His wife's fingers intertwined with his immediately, a gesture that spoke volumes about their shared thoughts. The hardest part, Mrs. Jennings said, her voice catching slightly, is watching her try so hard to be perfect, as if being the best-behaved child will somehow make up for... She didn't finish the sentence, but she didn't need to. Eleanor squeezed Jonathan's hand and he returned the pressure. Their eyes met in a moment of silent communication, decades of marriage allowing them to read each other's thoughts without a word. A gentle smile of understanding passed between them, followed by a slight nod from Jonathan. Eleanor's face softened into a warm, reassuring smile as they took their first step toward Maya's corner, their hearts already opening to welcome her into their lives. Jonathan and Eleanor approached Maya's corner with gentle steps, careful not to startle her. The girl's fingers twisted nervously around her stuffed rabbit's ears as they drew closer. Eleanor knelt down to Maya's level, her warm smile reaching her eyes. What's your name, sweetheart? Eleanor asked softly, her voice as gentle as a summer breeze. Maya's dark eyes darted between Eleanor and Jonathan, then briefly to Mrs. Jennings, who stood watching from a distance. She swallowed hard before answering in a whisper, Ma Maya. That's such a beautiful name, Eleanor said. And who's this? She gestured to the well-loved stuffed animal in Maya's arms. Maya's grip on the rabbit loosened slightly. This is Mr. Hops, she said, her voice a little stronger. He's been with me since, since forever. Jonathan knelt down beside his wife, his usual business-like demeanor melting away. Mr. Hops looks like a very good friend, he observed warmly. Does he like to read too? Mrs. Jennings told us you enjoy reading to the younger children. A tiny smile flickered across Maya's face, small but genuine. Yes, sir. I read to him too sometimes, when everyone else is asleep. Eleanor's heart squeezed at these words. She shared another look with Jonathan, seeing in his eyes the same certainty she felt in her heart. Jonathan gave an almost imperceptible nod. Maya, Jonathan said gently, how would you like to come home with us? Maya's eyes widened, her mouth forming a small O of surprise. She looked between them, searching their faces as if trying to determine if this was real or just another dream that would fade by morning. Jonathan and Eleanor stood up, walking over to where Mrs. Jennings waited. We'd like to adopt Maya, Jonathan said firmly. Mrs. Jennings's eyes filled with happy tears. Are you sure? She asked cautiously, though hope colored her voice. Absolutely, Jonathan replied without hesitation. They returned to Maya, who watched them with a mixture of fear and hope. Jonathan knelt down once more. We'll be back for you tomorrow, he said softly but clearly. Eleanor leaned down and pressed a gentle kiss to Maya's forehead. See you soon, sweetheart, she whispered, her voice full of promise. The quiet of Mrs. Jennings's small office was broken only by the gentle ticking of an old wall clock and the occasional creak of her worn leather chair. She looked across her desk at Jonathan and Eleanor, her weathered hands clasped together, fingers intertwined with the familiar tension of these moments. Are you sure? She asked, her voice carrying both hope and caution, the weight of years of experience evident in her tone. I want you to understand, adopting an older child can present unique challenges. There will be adjustments for everyone involved. Jonathan's warm smile never wavered, his kind eyes crinkling at the corners. We're sure, he said firmly, reaching for Eleanor's hand and giving it a reassuring squeeze. Their eyes met, exchanging a look of complete agreement the kind of silent communication that comes from years of marriage. Mrs. Jennings pulled open her desk drawer, its familiar squeak echoing in the small space, retrieving a thick stack of forms. Well then, she said, her voice brightening with renewed purpose. Let's get started on the paperwork, there's quite a bit to go through. She spread the documents across her desk methodically, explaining each one carefully as if unveiling a treasure map to a new future. This is the initial application, she said, sliding a form toward them with practiced precision. And these are the background check authorizations. We'll need signatures on each page. 
Jonathan's hand moved steadily across the papers, his signature neat and purposeful, each stroke bringing them closer to their goal. Beside him, Eleanor could barely contain her excitement, dabbing at her eyes with a tissue as happy tears threatened to spill over, her shoulders trembling slightly with emotion. Through the office window, Maya stood in the playroom watching intently. Her small fingers twisted the ears of her stuffed rabbit, Mr. Hops, as she observed the adults talking, her expression a mixture of wonder and uncertainty. She'd seen this scene play out before with other children, but never for her. Her heart beat faster with each passing moment. After the most important forms were signed and carefully arranged in a neat pile, Jonathan and Eleanor approached Maya one final time. Jonathan knelt down to her level, his knees creaking slightly against the worn carpet, his voice gentle but firm. We'll come back tomorrow to bring you home, he said, the promise clear in his words, his eyes twinkling with genuine warmth. Eleanor leaned down and pressed a soft kiss to Maya's forehead, her perfume wrapping Maya in a cloud of comfort. Maya's eyes welled up with tears, and she hugged Mr. Hops tighter to her chest, his familiar softness anchoring her in this moment of overwhelming emotion. For the first time in years, hope bloomed in her heart, real, tangible hope that felt different from all the times before, like sunshine breaking through clouds after a long storm. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows across the parking lot. As Jonathan and Eleanor made their way back to their car, their footsteps echoing against the asphalt. Through the tinted windows, they could see Nathan and Lucas sprawled across the back seat, heads lolling against the windows in half-sleep, their breath fogging small patches on the glass. The car door's opening startled them awake with a jolt. Finally, Nathan grumbled, stretching dramatically and rolling his shoulders. Can we go home now? We've been waiting forever. Jonathan settled into the driver's seat and adjusted the rearview mirror catching his son's irritated expressions reflected in the glass. He shared a quick, meaningful glance with Eleanor before clearing his throat. We have some news, he said, keeping his voice steady and measured, though his heart was racing with anticipation. Lucas yawned loudly, not bothering to cover his mouth. What kind of news? Eleanor turned in her seat to face the boys, her smile gentle but determined as she smoothed her skirt nervously. Your father and I have made an important decision today. We're adopting a little girl, Jonathan announced, watching their reactions carefully in the mirror, noting every subtle change in their expressions. Her name is Maya, and she's going to be your new sister. Nathan's face twisted into a scowl as he crossed his arms tightly across his chest, his fingers digging into his sleeves. You're joking, right? This has to be some kind of weird joke. Why do we need a sister? Lucas muttered, slumping further into his seat until his chin nearly touched his chest. Things are fine the way they are. This isn't up for discussion, Eleanor said firmly, though her tone remained kind and patient. The paperwork is already started. Maya will be coming home with us tomorrow and we expect you both to make her feel welcome in our family. But we don't want a sister! Nathan's voice rose sharply, cracking with emotion. Especially not some random kid from an orphanage. Did you even think about asking us first? Jonathan's hands tightened slightly on the steering wheel, his knuckles whitening. I know this is a big change, but you'll adjust. Maya needs a family and we can give her that. She deserves a chance at happiness. Whatever, Nathan spat, turning to stare out the window at the passing scenery, his breath creating small clouds on the glass. Lucas followed his brother's lead, pulling out his phone and pointedly ignoring their parents the blue light from the screen illuminating his scowling face. The drive home stretched out in tense silence, broken only by the occasional angry mutter from the back seat and the soft hum of the engine. Jonathan and Eleanor exchanged worried looks as they navigated the familiar streets toward home, each lost in their own thoughts about the challenges ahead. As they pulled into their driveway, Nathan and Lucas didn't wait for the car to fully stop before unbuckling their seatbelts with aggressive clicks. The moment Jonathan shifted into park, they threw open their doors with more force than necessary. This is so stupid, Nathan growled under his breath as he stomped toward the house, his feet heavy on the concrete path. Total disaster, Lucas agreed quietly, following close behind his brother, his shoulders hunched in defeat.
Jonathan and Eleanor remained in the car watching their sons disappear into the house like angry storms. They shared a look of concern mixed with hope that things would improve once Maya arrived, both silently praying they'd made the right decision for their family's future. Jonathan and Eleanor made their way up the grand staircase to their bedroom, their footsteps muffled by the plush cream-colored carpet. The antique chandelier cast a warm glow over them as they walked, hand in hand. Eleanor's eyes sparkled with excitement as she pulled out her tablet, her fingers dancing across the screen as she showed Jonathan the items she'd carefully picked out for Maya's room. Look at these sheets, she said softly, scrolling through images of soft pink and lavender bedding with delicate flower patterns. And this little reading lamp with butterflies? See how they catch the light? Do you think she'd like that? Jonathan wrapped a protective arm around his wife's shoulders, his smile warm and tender as he studied the images. She'll love it. We'll make it perfect for her, he assured her, his voice filled with quiet conviction. Our girl deserves nothing less. Down the hallway, in a dimly lit room, Nathan and Lucas huddled together, their faces half hidden in shadow. The golden glow from the hallway light crept under their door, casting long fingers across the hardwood floor like reaching hands. The brothers' shared bedroom felt thick with tension and unspoken resentment. Can you believe this? Nathan muttered, leaning against his bedpost with his arms crossed tightly against his chest. His features twisted into a scowl as he heard their parents' excited voices floating down the hall discussing paint colors and curtain patterns. We can't let her take our place. Lucas sat on the edge of his bed, picking nervously at a loose thread on his sleeve. His shoulders slumped with uncertainty. Yeah, but what can we do about it? Dad's already made up his mind. You know how he gets. Nathan's eyes narrowed as he straightened up, determination hardening his features. We make it hard for her. So hard that she won't want to stay. He began pacing, his sock-covered feet silent on the floor like a predator plotting its move. We don't talk to her, we don't include her in anything. We make her feel like she doesn't belong here. Lucas nodded slowly, warming to the idea as his initial hesitation melted away. We could ignore her at dinner, he suggested, his voice growing more animated with each word. And never invite her to watch TV with us. Make sure she knows she's not welcome. Exactly, Nathan's lips curved into a satisfied smile. And if mom or dad asks... We'll just say we're trying to adjust. They can't force us to like her. It's perfect. Meanwhile, Eleanor carefully smoothed fresh sheets onto Maya's new bed, tucking the corners with practiced precision and maternal care. Jonathan arranged stuffed animals on the window seat, making sure each one was positioned just right, imagining Maya curled up there with a book. The pale moonlight filtered through the curtains, casting a peaceful glow over the room they were preparing with such love. Neither of them could hear the quiet conspiracy taking shape just a few rooms away. In their bedroom, Nathan and Lucas fell silent, their minds churning with plans for the next day. The darkness seemed to deepen around them, matching their intentions. Nathan's face held a triumphant smirk as he whispered, Let's see how long she lasts. The words hung in the air like a challenge, while outside their window, stars twinkled obliviously in the night sky. The morning sun painted golden streaks across the kitchen as Jonathan and Eleanor rushed through breakfast, their movements quick but purposeful. Eleanor checked her watch for the third time, not wanting to be late to pick up Maya. Ready? Jonathan asked, jingling the car keys. His wife nodded, grabbing her purse with trembling fingers. At the orphanage, Mrs. Jennings stood waiting at the entrance, one hand resting gently on Maya's shoulder. The little girl clutched her worn, stuffed animal to her chest, her small backpack containing her few belongings slung over her shoulder. Here she is, Mrs. Jennings said warmly, giving Maya a gentle push forward, all ready for her new adventure. The drive home was quiet but filled with anticipation. Maya sat in the back seat, her eyes wide as she watched the familiar streets of her old neighborhood fade away, replaced by tree-lined avenues and grand houses. When they pulled up to the Walker mansion, Maya's mouth fell open slightly. Eleanor squeezed her hand reassuringly as they walked through the front door. Welcome home, sweetheart, she said softly. 
Maya's new room drew a tiny gasp from her lips. Soft pink and lavender walls surrounded her, and stuffed animals lined the window seat. A butterfly lamp cast gentle patterns on the ceiling, and books filled a small white bookshelf. Is this all mine? She whispered, touching the bed's comforter with careful fingers. Eleanor showed her around the rest of the house, pointing out family photos and sharing little stories about each room. Maya followed closely, taking everything in with quiet wonder. When dinner time arrived, Nathan and Lucas appeared in the dining room, their faces arranged in careful smiles that didn't quite reach their eyes. You can sit here, Maya, Nathan said, pulling out a chair between him and Lucas. His voice dripped with fake sweetness. Yeah, right between us, Lucas added, sharing a quick glance with his brother. Maya approached the chair cautiously. As she sat down, she felt sharp pricks against her legs, and her body tensed. The thumbtacks the boys had carefully arranged bit into her skin, but she pressed her lips together, determined not to cry out. Throughout dinner, Maya shifted uncomfortably in her seat, but kept her face neutral. Eleanor noticed her movement and looked concerned. Are you all right, Maya? Is everything okay? Maya nodded quickly, forcing a smile. Yes, thank you, she said quietly, taking another small bite of her food. Nathan and Lucas exchanged frustrated looks across the table. Their prank hadn't produced the tears or complaints they'd expected. Maya just sat there eating her dinner in silence, refusing to give them the satisfaction of seeing her pain. The morning sunlight streamed through the kitchen windows as Maya carefully stacked the breakfast plates. Her small hands moved with deliberate care, not wanting to drop anything in her new home. Eleanor watched her with a warm smile, touched by the girl's eagerness to help. Thank you, sweetheart, Eleanor said, gathering her purse for errands. I'll be back soon. In the shadowy hallway, Nathan and Lucas lurked, watching Maya's every move. Their eyes narrowed as they saw Eleanor praise the girl's helpfulness. Time to show her who really belongs here, Nathan whispered to his brother. Lucas nodded, a smirk playing across his face. Once Eleanor left, Nathan sauntered into the kitchen, his face stretched in an exaggerated, friendly grin. Maya tensed slightly at his approach, but tried not to show it. Hey, Maya, Nathan called out, his voice dripping with false sweetness. Want to play hide-and-seek with us? Lucas appeared beside his brother, nodding eagerly. Yeah, it'll be fun. We know all the best hiding spots. Maya clutched her stuffed animal tighter, her heart beating faster. She looked between the two boys, wanting desperately to believe their sudden kindness was real. After a moment's hesitation, she gave a small nod. Great, Nathan exclaimed, grabbing her hand. We know the perfect spot. They led her down to the basement door, Lucas flicking on the light switch. This is where we always hide, he said, pushing the door open. No one ever thinks to look here. Maya peered down the basement stairs, her excitement mixing with growing unease. The brothers ushered her forward, and she took careful steps down into the cool space below. Now just wait here, Nathan called from the top of the stairs, and count to hundred. Before Maya could respond, she heard the heavy door slam shut. The lock clicked with a definitive sound that made her stomach drop. Footsteps and muffled laughter faded away upstairs. Maya's breath caught in her throat as reality sank in. She ran up the stairs, her small fists pounding against the door. Please let me out, she called, her voice trembling. Nathan? Lucas? Only silence answered her pleas. Hours crawled by in the dim basement light as Maya sat huddled against the door, her stuffed animal clutched tightly to her chest. Her quiet sobs echoed in the empty space. Upstairs, Eleanor returned home and began searching for Maya. Worry creased her forehead as she checked room after room. When Jonathan arrived home, he found his wife in a state of panic. I can't find her anywhere, Eleanor said, wringing her hands. Then, faintly, they heard crying coming from below. Eleanor's eyes widened in recognition as she rushed to the basement door. She quickly unlocked it, and Maya tumbled into her arms, tears streaming down her face. Jonathan's expression darkened as he watched his wife comfort the trembling girl. His voice cut through the air like steel. Nathan, Lucas, come here, now. The sound of Jonathan's voice reverberated through the house, causing Nathan and Lucas to freeze in their tracks. 
Their earlier smugness melted away as they trudged into the living room, heads down and shoulders hunched like scolded puppies caught in the act. Maya stood close to Eleanor, her small frame still trembling slightly as she wiped the last tears from her reddened eyes, her breathing finally starting to steady. Jonathan's face was a mask of barely contained anger, his jaw clenched as he looked at his sons. His hands were balled into tight fists at his sides, knuckles white with tension. Eleanor kept one arm protectively around Maya, her expression a mixture of hurt and disappointment, occasionally squeezing the girl's shoulder in reassurance. Explain yourselves, Jonathan demanded, his voice low and controlled, each word weighted with parental authority. What possessed you to lock your sister in the basement? Nathan shuffled his feet against the hardwood floor, avoiding his father's stern gaze. We were just playing around, he mumbled, trying to sound casual but failing miserably. It was just hide-and-seek. Lucas remained silent, his eyes fixed on the carpet, fingers fidgeting with the hem of his t-shirt. His brother's weak excuse hung in the air, fooling no one, as thick as the tension that filled the room. Eleanor shook her head, her voice quivering with emotion. I can't believe you would do something so cruel. Maya is part of our family now. She's your sister. Her grip on Maya's shoulder tightened protectively. She's not our sister, Nathan burst out, his face flushing red all the way to his ears. She just showed up yesterday and suddenly we're supposed to pretend... Enough! Jonathan cut him off sharply, the single word cracking like a whip through the room. This behavior is completely unacceptable. You're both grounded for a month. No phones, no computers, no video games and you'll be doing extra chores around the house. The boys' faces darkened with resentment as they nodded reluctantly, shoulders slumping even further. Nathan shot a bitter glance at Lucas, who still hadn't spoken a word, his silence speaking volumes about his guilt. Jonathan's expression softened as he turned to Maya, who had been watching the scene unfold in silence, her dark eyes wide and uncertain. You're safe now, he said gently, his voice warm and reassuring. We're here for you. The morning sun filtered through the living room windows as Jonathan and Eleanor sat with Maya on the plush sofa. Maya's small hands were folded in her lap, her worn stuffed animal tucked securely beside her as she listened intently. We've enrolled you in a wonderful school, Eleanor explained, her voice gentle and encouraging. It's just a few blocks away, and they have excellent teachers. Jonathan nodded, adding warmly, this will be a place where you can learn and make new friends. Maya's eyes widened, a spark of hope flickering across her face. She hadn't been to a proper school in quite some time, and the thought made her heart flutter with both excitement and nervousness. Later that afternoon, Eleanor took Maya to the local department store. The school supplies aisle stretched before them, filled with colorful notebooks, markers, and backpacks. Eleanor watched as Maya's usual timidity began to melt away, replaced by growing excitement as she carefully selected each item. Which color do you like best? Eleanor asked, holding up two backpacks, one purple, one blue. Maya reached out tentatively toward the purple one, her fingers brushing against the fabric. This one, she whispered, a small smile playing at her lips. From their upstairs window at home, Nathan and Lucas watched their mother's car pull into the driveway. Shopping bags filled with Maya's new supplies were visible through the car windows. Look at that, Nathan muttered, his face darkening. They never took us shopping like that. Lucas pressed his forehead against the cool glass, his voice bitter. Yeah, it's like we don't even matter anymore. It's all about precious Maya. That evening, the family bustled around the kitchen as they prepared for Maya's first day. Eleanor carefully packed a lunchbox with Maya's favorites while Jonathan sat at the table giving her an encouraging pep talk about what to expect. Remember, Jonathan said softly, patting Maya's shoulder, you're going to do great tomorrow. Maya's face lit up with a genuine smile, the first real one they'd seen since her arrival. It transformed her entire face, making her eyes sparkle with newfound confidence and hope. The autumn months brought significant changes to the Walker household. Maya, once shy and uncertain, blossomed in her new school environment. Her teachers frequently sent notes home praising her exceptional work ethic and kind demeanor toward her classmates. During math lessons, she would often help struggling students with gentle patience, explaining complex problems in ways they could understand. 
In reading class, her thoughtful responses and deep analysis of characters impressed her teachers and sparked meaningful classroom discussions. At the parent-teacher meeting, Maya's homeroom teacher, Mrs. Thompson, couldn't contain her enthusiasm. Her eyes sparkled with genuine warmth as she spoke. Maya is a wonderful addition to our class, she told Jonathan and Eleanor, who sat beaming with pride. She's not only excelling academically, but also showing remarkable leadership qualities. Just last week, she organized a study group for our upcoming science project. Eleanor squeezed Jonathan's hand as they listened to story after story of Maya's achievements. Their decision to adopt her felt more right with each passing day, watching her transform from a timid child into a confident young student. However, the situation with Nathan and Lucas painted a stark contrast. Their teachers' reports grew increasingly concerning, filled with notes about disruption and incomplete work. Nathan had started talking back during classes, challenging his teacher's authority at every turn with snide remarks and eye rolls. Lucas, following his brother's example like a faithful shadow, regularly forgot to turn in assignments and spent more time doodling elaborate cartoons than paying attention to lessons. I'm worried about Nathan's attitude, his English teacher explained during their meeting, her forehead creased with concern. He seems angry, and it's affecting his grades significantly. Last week, he refused to participate in our group discussion entirely. Lucas's math teacher shared similar concerns, adjusting his glasses nervously. He's capable of much better work, but lately he seems completely disengaged. He scored only 40% on our last test, though I know he understands the material. At home, the divide grew deeper. During dinner, Eleanor would share stories of Maya's latest achievements, an A-plus on a difficult test, or how she'd been chosen to help organize the class library. Jonathan would ruffle Maya's hair affectionately, his eyes crinkling at the corners as he said things like, That's our girl. And again, Nathan and Lucas would push their food around their plates, creating abstract patterns with their vegetables, exchanging dark glances across the table. Each praise of Maya felt like a personal slight to them, fueling their resentment like adding kindling to a smoldering fire. One Friday afternoon, Maya came home clutching several certificates in her hands, the papers slightly crumpled from her nervous grip. She approached Jonathan and Eleanor in the kitchen, her steps still carrying that hint of shyness despite her growing confidence. The autumn sunlight streaming through the windows caught the gold seals on the certificates. What's this, sweetheart? Eleanor asked, taking the certificates with careful hands. Student of the month, Maya said softly, her voice barely above a whisper and perfect attendance. Her fingers twisted the hem of her Navy school sweater as she waited for their response. Jonathan pulled her into a warm hug, his face glowing with pride. We're so proud of you, Maya. You've worked so hard for this. From their position in the hallway, Nathan and Lucas watched the scene unfold, their faces hardening as Maya wrapped her arms around Eleanor in a tight embrace. Their shadows stretched long across the hardwood floor, Silent witnesses to the growing rift in the family. Years passed and Maya finally stood tall in her graduation gown, her honor cords draped elegantly around her shoulders. At 22, she carried herself with quiet confidence, a far cry from the timid 12-year-old who had first entered this home. Jonathan beamed with pride from his favorite armchair, his silver-streaked hair and laugh lines testament to the passing years. Eleanor fussed over the refreshment table, arranging cookies and punch with meticulous care, occasionally stealing glances at Maya with tears of joy threatening to spill. Summa cum laude, one of the guests remarked, admiring Maya's diploma. That's quite an achievement. Nathan and Lucas lounged against the far wall, both wearing expensive suits that spoke of their positions in their father's company. Nathan rolled his eyes at the praise being heaped on Maya. It's just a piece of paper he muttered to Lucas, adjusting his designer watch. We're already making six figures without wasting four years in school. Lucas nodded in agreement, sipping his drink. All those late nights studying when she could have been learning the business from the ground up like we did. Their words carried across the room, but Maya maintained her gracious smile, thanking guests for their congratulations and keeping her composure. The years had taught her to rise above their barbs. Jonathan watched as Maya expertly navigated conversations with business associates and family friends, noting how she remembered personal details about each guest, 
and asked thoughtful questions about their lives. Her natural leadership abilities shone through in every interaction. Did you see how she handled the Mitchell account presentation last summer? One of Jonathan's business partners commented. That internship project she developed saved the company millions. Brilliant strategic thinking. Nathan's knuckles whitened around his glass as he overheard the praise. He and Lucas had been working on that account for months before Maya's summer internship. During a quiet moment in the celebration, Jonathan motioned Maya over to his chair. His eyes crinkled with warmth as he looked up at his daughter. I'm so proud of you, he said softly. Your hard work and dedication have proven that you can achieve anything. Maya bent down to hug him, her eyes glistening with gratitude. Thank you, Dad, she whispered, the word carrying years of love and trust built between them. From their corner, Nathan and Lucas watched the exchange, their expressions darkening. The familiar poison of jealousy coursed through them as they observed yet another moment of their father's obvious pride in Maya's accomplishments. One day, Jonathan sat in his favorite leather armchair, the newspaper rustling as he turned the pages. Eleanor hummed softly in the kitchen, the gentle clink of coffee cups providing a soothing backdrop to their peaceful morning routine. Suddenly, Jonathan's hand flew to his chest. The newspaper slipped from his fingers, pages scattering across the floor. His breath came in short, painful gasps as he doubled over, face contorted in pain. Eleanor, he managed to call out, his voice barely above a whisper. In the kitchen, Eleanor heard the distress in his voice. She dropped the dish towel and rushed to the living room, her heart racing when she saw Jonathan's pale face and labored breathing. Jonathan! She knelt beside him, hands trembling as she reached for her phone. Hold on, darling, I'm calling the boys. Nathan's voice came through the speaker, casual and disinterested. Mom, we're in the middle of a meeting. Your father's having chest pains. Eleanor explained, her voice shaking. I think we need to get him to the hospital. Lucas's laughter echoed in the background. Dad probably just needs to lie down, Nathan replied dismissively. He's been working too hard lately. Tell him to take it easy. The call ended before Eleanor could protest further. With growing panic, she dialed Maya's number. Maya answered on the second ring. Mom, what's wrong? It's your father. Eleanor explained quickly. He's having trouble breathing and I don't know what to do. I'm on my way, Maya responded without hesitation. Call an ambulance right now, I'll be there in five minutes. True to her word, Maya arrived moments later still in her work clothes. She took control of the situation with calm efficiency, speaking clearly with the 911 operator while holding her father's hand and monitoring his breathing. The ambulance arrived with sirens wailing. Maya provided the paramedics with precise information about Jonathan's symptoms and medical history while keeping a steadying arm around Eleanor's shoulders. As they loaded Jonathan onto the stretcher, his eyes found Maya's face. Despite his pain, he managed a small smile of gratitude. Eleanor and Maya followed close behind as the paramedics wheeled him toward the emergency entrance, their hands clasped tightly together. He's going to be okay, Maya promised squeezing Eleanor's hand as they watched Jonathan being wheeled through the emergency room doors. The hospital room was bathed in the sterile glow of fluorescent lights, the steady beep-beep of monitors providing a rhythmic backdrop to the tense atmosphere. Jonathan lay propped up against white pillows, his usually robust complexion now pale and drawn, with dark circles shadowing his eyes. Eleanor sat beside him, her hand resting gently on his arm, her wedding ring catching the harsh light as her fingers trembled slightly. Maya stood at the foot of the bed, her posture straight but her eyes betraying her concern. Her hands gripped the metal rail of the hospital bed until her knuckles turned white. The door opened with a soft whoosh and the doctor entered, his expression grave as he clutched a clipboard. Behind him, Nathan and Lucas shuffled in, their expensive suits creasing as they moved their faces showing more annoyance than worry at being called away from their business dealings. Mr. Walker, the doctor began, his voice gentle but professional, adjusting his glasses as he spoke. I'm afraid the test results aren't what we hoped for. He paused, making sure he had everyone's attention, the silence in the room growing heavier with each passing second. We've discovered cancer, and it's in an advanced stage. 
The words fell heavy in the room like stones dropping into still water. Eleanor's grip on Jonathan's arm tightened, and tears welled up in her eyes, spilling onto her cheeks despite her efforts to hold them back. Maya's jaw clenched, her shoulders squaring as if preparing for battle, while her free hand reached out to squeeze her mother's shoulder, offering what comfort she could. Nathan and Lucas shifted their weight from foot to foot, exchanging uncomfortable glances. Their faces showed a mix of emotions, guilt over their earlier dismissal of their father's symptoms, fear about what this diagnosis meant for their future, and an underlying selfishness that even this moment couldn't fully mask. Their designer watches glinted as they fidgeted with their sleeves, unable to meet their father's eyes. I'm sorry, the doctor continued, explaining more details about the diagnosis, his pen tapping against the clipboard as he spoke, but his words seemed to float in the air, each person processing the news in their own way. The constant beeping of the heart monitor seemed to grow louder in the silence between his sentences. When the doctor finally left the room, the door clicking shut behind him, Eleanor turned to Maya, pulling her into a tight embrace. The familiar scent of her mother's perfume enveloped Maya as Eleanor whispered, We have to stay strong for him, her voice breaking slightly. Nathan and Lucas exchanged another quick, nervous look before averting their eyes, their expensive leather shoes scuffing against the linoleum floor, while Maya responded with a determined nod, her arms tightening around her mother. The afternoon sun filtered through the Venetian blinds, casting striped shadows across the scene of a family facing their greatest challenge yet. The fluorescent lights of the hospital lobby buzzed overhead, casting an artificial glow across Nathan and Lucas's faces as they stood near the humming vending machines later on. Nathan's expensive suit jacket was wrinkled from hours of sitting, and his tie hung loose around his neck. He leaned against the wall, running a hand through his disheveled hair as his mind raced with calculations. This is our chance, Nathan whispered, his voice barely audible above the distant sounds of hospital activity. His eyes darted around the empty lobby, making sure no one was within earshot. Lucas shifted his weight, adjusting his cufflinks, a nervous habit he'd developed over the years. What do you mean? he asked, his brow furrowing as he studied his older brother's face. Nathan pushed himself off the wall and moved closer to Lucas. Look, Dad's condition is getting worse, he said, his voice tight with frustration. And Maya? She's practically running the business now. Did you see how he looks at her? Like she's some kind of savior? The vending machine light flickered, casting strange shadows across Nathan's face as he continued. We need to make sure the will favors us. We're his real children after all. His words carried a bitter edge that made Lucas wince. Lucas's initial uncertainty began to fade as he considered Nathan's words. The same ambition that had driven them both for years started to surface in his expression. You're right, he agreed, his voice growing stronger. We can't let everything we've worked for slip away. We need to talk to Mom, Nathan pressed, his fingers drumming against his leg. We'll make it sound like we're just concerned about Dad's affairs being in order. You know, responsible sons looking out for the family's best interests. Lucas nodded, his earlier doubts completely replaced by determination. We'll tell her it's what Dad would want, his sons carrying on his legacy. The brothers stood in silent agreement, their shared ambition creating an invisible bond between them. They would act soon, before it was too late, before Maya's influence could grow any stronger. In the sterile hospital room several floors above, Maya sat beside Jonathan's bed, her hand gently holding his as he slept peacefully, unaware of the conversation taking place in the lobby below. The steady beeping of monitors provided a quiet rhythm to her vigil, her face illuminated by the soft glow of medical equipment. Sunlight filtered through the hospital blinds, casting thin strips of golden light across Jonathan's tired face. His eyes fluttered open slowly, adjusting to the morning brightness. Eleanor and Maya sat beside his bed, their faces showing the wear of a long night's vigil, with dark circles under their eyes and coffee cups long since gone cold on the nearby table. Eleanor managed a weary smile, the corners of her eyes crinkling with relief at seeing him awake. Jonathan's gaze settled on Maya, who hadn't let go of his hand all night, her fingers intertwined with his as if afraid he might slip away. The sight of her brought warmth to his pale features, 
adding a touch of color to his wan complexion. Maya, he whispered, his voice rough from sleep and medication. Come closer. Maya leaned in, her dark eyes full of concern and love, the morning light highlighting the worry lines that had formed on her young face. Jonathan's hand trembled slightly as he squeezed hers, his skin paper thin against her warm grip. I want to thank you, he said softly, each word measured and deliberate. For everything you've done for our family, for being here, supporting us all. Tears welled in his eyes as he looked at the young woman who had grown from that shy little girl in the orphanage into someone so strong and caring. The transformation never ceased to fill him with pride. I'm so grateful for you, daughter, he managed, his voice thick with emotion, the word daughter carrying all the weight of their shared years together. The moment hung in the air, precious and pure, broken only by the steady beeping of the heart monitor and the distant sounds of hospital activity. Eleanor watched them both, her own eyes glistening as she witnessed the beautiful bond between father and daughter, her hand pressed against her heart. The sound of footsteps broke the silence. Nathan and Lucas appeared in the doorway, their expensive suits wrinkled from sleep, ties loosened and hair disheveled. They shifted awkwardly, taking in the scene before them like outsiders witnessing an intimate moment. Their expressions flickered between discomfort and apprehension as they watched Maya holding their father's hand, jealousy and uncertainty evident in their stiff postures. Maya straightened and stepped back, making room for the brothers to approach, smoothing her sweater with trembling hands. They moved forward with hesitant steps, their shoes clicking softly against the linoleum floor, their eyes carefully avoiding hers as they drew closer to their father's bed. Jonathan observed his son's approach, his expression growing more guarded, the warmth from moments ago fading like sun behind clouds. His eyes narrowed slightly as he studied their faces, sensing an underlying tension in their presence, reading the familiar signs of discord in their rigid movements. The peaceful atmosphere of moments ago dissolved into an uncomfortable silence as the brothers stood at the foot of his bed, the weight of unspoken words hanging heavy in the sterile hospital air. Nathan cleared his throat, his fingers fidgeting with his tie as he glanced at Lucas for support. The morning sunlight cast harsh shadows across his face, highlighting the tension in his jaw as he stepped forward. Dad, we were thinking, he began, his voice straining to sound concerned rather than calculating. Maybe it's time to consider setting up a will just in case. The words fell into the room like stones into a still pond, creating ripples of shock that spread across every face. Eleanor's eyes widened, her hand flying to her mouth. Maya's breath caught in her throat, her fingers tightening instinctively around Jonathan's hand. The steady beeping of the heart monitor seemed to grow louder in the heavy silence. Jonathan's face transformed, color rising in his pale cheeks as disbelief gave way to anger. His fingers trembled, not from weakness now, but from barely contained emotion. A will, he repeated, his voice shaking with the effort to remain controlled. You're here to talk about that while I'm fighting for my life? Nathan's carefully constructed facade crumbled under his father's piercing gaze. He took a half step backward, bumping into Lucas, who had already begun retreating toward the door. The younger brother's face had gone pale, his earlier confidence evaporating in the face of their father's righteous anger. Eleanor rose from her chair, her expression shifting from initial shock to a deep, devastating disappointment. She shook her head slowly, years of maternal patience wearing thin as she regarded her sons. Her lips pressed into a thin line, words of rebuke clearly fighting to break free. Maya stood silently at Jonathan's bedside, her dark eyes glistening with unshed tears as she turned away from the scene. She couldn't bear to watch the pain etched across Jonathan's face, couldn't stand to see the naked greed that had driven her brothers to this moment. Her shoulders tensed with the effort of containing her emotions, torn between hurt at their timing and anger at their selfishness. The tension in the room grew unbearable until Jonathan's voice cut through it like a blade. Though physically weakened, his words carried the full weight of paternal authority. If you're only here for that, he said, each word precise and cutting, leave, 
I don't need this now. Nathan and Lucas exchanged looks of anger and disbelief, their faces flushing with humiliation. Without another word, they turned and stormed out of the room, the door slamming behind them with enough force to rattle the window blinds. Jonathan closed his eyes, exhaustion etching deep lines around his mouth as he sank back against his pillows. Eleanor moved closer, placing a gentle hand on his shoulder, while Maya remained at his side, both women offering silent comfort in the wake of the brothers' cruel display. Nathan and Lucas burst through the hospital doors, their footsteps echoing angrily down the sterile hallway. The harsh fluorescent lights cast stark shadows across Nathan's face as it burned with humiliation. He stalked toward the elevator, his hands clenched into tight fists at his sides, knuckles white with tension. He's letting her take everything, Nathan growled, jabbing the elevator button repeatedly with such force that his finger hurt. That little orphan girl is going to end up with our inheritance. His voice dripped with venom as he spat out the words, his shoulders trembling with barely contained rage. Lucas leaned against the wall, his own face flushed with a mix of shame and anger. His expensive suit was wrinkled from the confrontation, his tie hanging loose around his neck. We should have known he'd take her side. He always does. Ever since the day he brought her home. Inside the hospital room, Eleanor gently dabbed Jonathan's forehead with a cool cloth while Maya adjusted his pillows, her movements careful and precise. The tension from the confrontation still hung in the air like a heavy cloud, but Jonathan's breathing had begun to steady. His weathered face softened as he looked up at Maya, who was carefully arranging his blankets with the same tender attention she'd shown him since childhood. You don't need to worry about them, Jonathan whispered, reaching for Maya's hand with trembling fingers. His voice was tired but firm, carrying the same unwavering certainty that had guided their family for years. You are my daughter and that won't change, it never will. Maya's heart swelled with love and gratitude, even as guilt tugged at her consciousness. She thought about her brother's angry faces, their harsh words still ringing in her ears, wondering how the family had reached this point of division. Despite all the years that had passed, despite all her efforts to win their acceptance, the shared holiday meals, the attempted conversations, the olive branches extended. The gulf between them had only widened. Eleanor watched the exchange between father and daughter, her own eyes filling with tears. She reached out and brushed back Maya's dark hair with gentle fingers, the same loving gesture she'd made countless times before. We're stronger together, she whispered softly, her voice thick with emotion. Maya couldn't hold back any longer. The tears she'd been fighting spilled over as she leaned into Eleanor's embrace, accepting the comfort of her mother's arms. The familiar scent of Eleanor's perfume wrapped around her like a protective shield. Outside the hospital, Nathan and Lucas pushed through the main doors into the parking lot, their footsteps heavy with resentment as they walked away into the gathering dusk. The evening shadows lengthened across the hospital room as Jonathan lay in his bed, the soft golden glow of the bedside lamp casting gentle shadows on his tired face. Eleanor sat beside him, her fingers tenderly stroking his hand, feeling each familiar line and wrinkle. The steady beeping of monitors provided a quiet rhythm to their intimate moment. We need to talk, Jonathan said, his voice weak but carrying the same determination that had guided him through decades of business decisions. Eleanor leaned closer, her gray hair catching the lamplight as she shifted forward. What is it, dear? She asked softly, giving his hand a gentle squeeze. Jonathan's eyes met hers, filled with clarity despite his illness. It's about the future, Eleanor. About Maya. He paused, gathering strength. I've made my decision about the legacy of this family. Eleanor listened intently as Jonathan continued, his words measured and thoughtful. She's proven herself, Eleanor. She's kind, strong, and dependable. I trust her. His voice cracked slightly with emotion. Maya has shown us what true family means. She's earned this, not just through her work, but through her heart. Tears welled in Eleanor's eyes as she nodded, understanding the weight of his words. She thought about the scared little girl from the orphanage who had blossomed into a remarkable young woman. She has, Jonathan. She truly has. Yeah. 
Remember how she stayed up all night helping me with those contract reviews? Jonathan smiled faintly. And the way she organized the charity gala last year? She didn't just do it well. She did it with compassion. Eleanor wiped her eyes, recalling countless moments where Maya had shown her true character. She's been such a blessing to us, she whispered. I want you to make sure she's protected, Jonathan continued, his grip tightening slightly on Eleanor's hand. The business needs her steady hand, her integrity. Promise me you'll help her, guide her. I promise, Eleanor replied, her voice steady despite her tears. She understood completely. Maya had earned this trust not through manipulation or demands, but through unwavering love and dedication. Jonathan's eyes began to close, exhaustion creeping in after the emotional conversation. Eleanor gently stroked his forehead, watching as his breathing evened out into sleep. The sound of soft footsteps made her turn, and there was Maya standing in the doorway, concern written across her face as she checked in on them. Eleanor opened her arms and Maya crossed the room quietly, falling into her mother's embrace. I'll take care of both of you, Maya whispered, her words carrying all the love and commitment that had made her truly their daughter. The morning sun filtered through the hospital curtains, casting a warm, gentle glow across Jonathan's room. His face appeared more peaceful than it had in days, though the illness had clearly taken its toll on his once robust frame. Eleanor maintained her vigil beside him, her shoulders straight despite her evident exhaustion, her eyes carrying a quiet determination that spoke of her inner strength. Her fingers absently smoothed the crisp white hospital sheets, a gesture she'd repeated countless times over the past few days. The door opened softly as Maya entered, carefully balancing a breakfast tray in her hands. She'd arranged everything perfectly, toast, scrambled eggs, and a small vase with a single fresh flower she'd picked from their garden that morning. Her movements were deliberate and gentle, mindful of the quiet atmosphere in the room. The familiar scent of breakfast temporarily masked the sterile hospital smell. Eleanor rose from her chair, crossing the short distance to Maya. She wrapped her arms around her daughter in a warm embrace, the kind that spoke volumes without words. The familiar scent of her mother's perfume brought Maya comfort. Your father wants to see you, Eleanor whispered into Maya's ear her voice thick with emotion, her hands squeezing Maya's shoulders gently. Maya's eyes widened slightly and she nodded, carefully setting the breakfast tray on the nearby table with trembling hands. Her steps were measured as she approached Jonathan's bedside, taking the seat Eleanor had vacated. The chair was still warm. Jonathan's hand reached for hers, and she was surprised by the strength of his grip, so familiar and reassuring despite his condition. His eyes, though tired, held a fierce pride as they met hers. The morning light caught the silver in his hair, giving him an almost ethereal appearance. You are my pride, he said, his voice carrying more strength than it had in days. I trust you with everything I hold dear. The words hung in the air, weighted with meaning and years of built trust and love. His thumb brushed across her knuckles in that familiar way he'd done since she was a little girl. Tears welled in Maya's eyes as she held his gaze, understanding the magnitude of what he was saying. She squeezed his hand gently, her touch conveying her commitment and love. A tear rolled down her cheek as Jonathan's eyes slowly closed, a content smile playing at the corners of his mouth as he drifted off to sleep, his breathing deep and steady. Maya looked over at Eleanor, who stood watching them with tear-filled eyes, one hand pressed against her heart. Eleanor's slight nod carried understanding and acceptance. The torch had been passed. The weight of responsibility settled on Maya's shoulders like a familiar blanket. She turned back to Jonathan, giving his hand another gentle squeeze, her heart full of silent promises to protect and nurture the family he had built, just as he had done for her all those years ago. The journey home from the hospital was filled with a delicate silence, broken only by the soft hum of the car engine and Jonathan's steady breathing. Eleanor kept glancing in the rearview mirror, checking on her husband who sat in the back seat with Maya supporting him. The familiar streets seemed different somehow, as if the world had shifted during their time away. When they pulled into the driveway of their home, Maya and Eleanor worked together with practiced care to help Jonathan out of the car. His steps were slow but determined as they made their way up the front path. 
The house welcomed them with its familiar warmth, though something had changed in the atmosphere, a subtle shift that spoke of both fragility and strength. Eleanor quickly settled into her new role as primary caregiver, moving through their home with quiet efficiency. She organized Jonathan's medications in a neat schedule, prepared special meals that would help build his strength, and maintained a watchful eye over his comfort. Her love showed in every small detail, the extra pillow placed just so, the glass of water always within reach, the gentle adjustments to make him more comfortable. Maya found her own rhythm, balancing between helping Eleanor with household tasks and managing the business responsibilities Jonathan had entrusted to her. She would spend mornings at the office, handling meetings and decisions with a grace that made her father proud. In the afternoons, she would return home, laptop in hand, to work from the dining room table where she could be close to her parents. The family fell into a new routine, one that centered around Jonathan's care but also strengthened their bonds. Eleanor would sit in her favorite spot, knitting or reading, always within earshot of Jonathan's needs. Maya would spread her work across the dining table, occasionally looking up to share a smile with her father or answer a question about the business. As the afternoon sun streamed through the windows, Jonathan watched from his comfortable armchair as Maya worked diligently on some business papers. Eleanor sat nearby in her rocking chair, her needlework forgotten in her lap as she observed the peaceful scene before her. The house felt different now, calmer, more unified, filled with an unspoken understanding of what truly mattered. Jonathan's voice, though soft, carried clearly through the quiet room as he whispered, This is how it should be. The autumn days settled into a gentle rhythm in the Walker household. Each morning brought its own quiet routine. Eleanor preparing Jonathan's medications, Maya reviewing business documents over breakfast, and the soft murmur of their voices mixing with the clinking of coffee cups. The living room became the heart of their daily life, with Jonathan's comfortable armchair positioned to catch both the morning sun and glimpses of Maya working at the nearby table. Eleanor moved between them like a guardian angel, attending to Jonathan's needs while keeping a watchful eye on Maya's growing responsibilities. Through the large bay window, Eleanor observed the steady stream of visitors who came to check on Jonathan. Mrs. Thompson from next door brought her famous chicken soup every Wednesday, always pausing to marvel at Maya's dedication. Such a blessing, she would whisper to Eleanor, to have a daughter like her. The Hendersons stopped by with fresh flowers and Mr. Henderson, a longtime business associate, couldn't help but mention how smoothly Maya had handled their latest contract negotiations. She has your wisdom, Jonathan, he said, and your kindness, Eleanor. These visits highlighted the conspicuous absence of Nathan and Lucas. Their empty chairs at dinner seemed to grow larger with each passing day, and their silence echoed through the house like a hollow drum. Eleanor found herself pausing sometimes, staring at family photos on the wall, tracing the outline of her son's faces with her eyes and wondering where they had gone wrong. The praise for Maya continued to flow from every direction. The minister's wife commented on Maya's regular visits to Jonathan's office, noting how she managed to keep the business running while still spending quality time with her parents. The local business community spoke highly of her leadership, impressed by her ability to balance compassion with competence. Yet each compliment, while warming Eleanor's heart with pride, also served as a reminder of her son's absence. The crack in their family unity grew more visible with each passing week, even as the bond between the three of them, Jonathan, Eleanor, and Maya, strengthened into something beautiful and unshakable. As evening settled over the house, Eleanor sat beside Jonathan's chair, their hands naturally finding each other. She watched Maya bent over her work, her face illuminated by the soft glow of her laptop screen. The sight filled Eleanor with a complex mixture of emotions, pride in the daughter who had become their anchor, and a mother's aching heart for the sons who had chosen to stay away. She's keeping us all together, Eleanor murmured to Jonathan, her voice barely above a whisper. Jonathan nodded, his eyes reflecting both the joy of Maya's devotion and the sorrow of his son's absence. In that moment of shared understanding, husband and wife sat in comfortable silence, their hearts full of both gratitude and grief. The evening quiet was broken by the unexpected chime of the doorbell. Maya lifted her head from the stack of papers she'd been reviewing, 
meeting Eleanor's surprised gaze across the room. Neither had expected visitors at this hour, especially on such a peaceful Sunday evening when the house was usually left undisturbed. Maya rose from her seat, smoothing her skirt as she walked to the door. Her heart beat a little faster with each step across the familiar floorboards. When she opened it, her breath caught slightly at the sight of Nathan and Lucas standing on the porch, their expensive suits a stark contrast to the humble setting. Their faces wore carefully constructed expressions of remorse, though something calculated lingered in their eyes like actors preparing for an important scene. We wanted to come back and talk, Nathan said, his voice carrying a practiced note of sincerity. Lucas stood slightly behind him, nodding in agreement, his hands fidgeting with his jacket sleeve. The brothers stepped into the foyer, their shoes clicking against the hardwood floor. The familiar smell of Eleanor's cooking, a mix of herbs and freshly baked bread, still hung in the air, making the moment feel oddly domestic despite the tension that crackled between them. Maya, Nathan began, his hands clasped in front of him, knuckles white with pressure. We've been thinking about everything, and we wanted to apologize. His words came out smooth, too smooth, like rehearsed lines in a play, each syllable measured and precise. Lucas chimed in, his voice quieter but equally measured, eyes darting between Maya and the floor. Yes, we're sorry for how we've acted for staying away so long. Maya stood still, studying their faces in the warm light of the entryway. She searched for any genuine emotion behind their words, any real sign of the remorse they claimed to feel. The overhead light cast shadows across their features, making it harder to read their true intentions, though their stiff postures spoke volumes. Before she could formulate a response, Jonathan's voice carried from the living room, strong despite his illness. Come here, all of you. The words, though softly spoken, held the unmistakable authority that had always commanded respect. The command hung in the air, shifting the atmosphere from awkward politeness to something more serious. Nathan and Lucas exchanged quick glances, their carefully maintained expressions slipping for just a moment, revealing a flash of what might have been genuine anxiety. Maya turned and led the way to the living room, where Jonathan sat in his armchair, Eleanor standing protectively beside him. The brothers followed, their footsteps hesitant now, the confidence in their stride diminishing with each step. As they entered the room, Jonathan's stern but tired gaze fell upon them, his eyes carrying the weight of years of disappointment and hope. If you're truly sorry, prove it, he said, breaking the heavy silence. His words hung in the air like a challenge, or perhaps an opportunity. Nathan and Lucas shared another look, their facade beginning to crack under their father's scrutiny. Their rehearsed confidence wavered, revealing glimpses of uncertainty beneath the polished exterior they'd worked so hard to maintain. The living room felt smaller than usual as Nathan and Lucas took tentative steps toward their father's armchair. The evening light cast long shadows across the floor, matching the gravity of the moment. Jonathan sat upright despite his obvious fatigue, his weathered hands resting firmly on the arms of his chair. Eleanor perched beside him, her fingers intertwined with his, while Maya maintained her position near the doorway, her presence both protective and observant. I've heard what you said to Maya, Jonathan began, his voice carrying the weight of years of disappointment. If you're here for an apology, it should be genuine. The words hung in the air like heavy clouds before a storm. Nathan's jaw tightened visibly, a muscle twitching beneath his skin. Lucas shifted his weight from one foot to the other, casting a sideways glance at his brother. Their carefully constructed facade began to crack under their father's direct scrutiny. We're sorry, Dad, Nathan muttered but the words fell flat, hollow as an empty promise. His tone carried none of the warmth or sincerity that should accompany true remorse. Jonathan's expression hardened, his eyes growing sharp despite his illness. Is this about your pride? Or do you truly regret what you've done? The question cut through the pretense like a knife through butter. Eleanor leaned forward slightly, her eyes moving between her son's faces, searching desperately for any sign of genuine feeling. But their avoiding gazes and stiff postures told her everything she needed to know. The silence that followed spoke volumes, filling the room with an almost tangible disappointment. 
Jonathan shook his head slowly, sadness creeping into his expression as he watched his son stand before him, unchanged despite everything. The weight of the moment seemed to press down on everyone in the room, making the air feel thick and heavy. Nathan's expression shifted from forced contrition to defiance, his shoulders squaring as he lifted his chin. We don't have to prove anything, he declared, his voice as cold as winter frost. Jonathan closed his eyes, his expression a mixture of defeat and resolution. Then you know where the door is, he whispered, the quiet words carrying more force than any shout could have. Without another word, Nathan and Lucas turned on their heels, their expensive shoes clicking against the hardwood as they strode out, leaving nothing but bitter silence in their wake. The heavy silence that followed Nathan and Lucas's departure settled over the room like a thick blanket, the echoes of their angry words still seeming to linger in the air. Maya stood near the doorway, her eyes fixed on Jonathan with deep concern, her hands clasped tightly together. The strain of the confrontation showed clearly on his face, making him appear more fragile than usual, his shoulders slightly slumped under the weight of the moment. Eleanor's hand found Maya's shoulder offering silent comfort, but Maya stepped forward with determination in her stride, her chin lifted with purpose. She faced her parents, her posture straight and confident, embodying the strength she'd developed over the years. The years of proving herself, of showing her love through countless small acts of devotion, the early morning coffee runs, the quiet reading sessions, the gentle support during doctor's visits, had shaped her into someone far removed from the shy orphan they'd first met. I want you both to know, Maya said, her voice carrying a strength that filled the room, steady and clear, that I am here for you, always. No matter what they say or do, I am part of this family, and I will protect it with everything I have. Jonathan's weary eyes brightened with unmistakable pride, the corners crinkling with warmth. The illness that had worn him down seemed to retreat for a moment as he gazed at his daughter, his face softening with love. Beside him, Eleanor wiped away a tear, nodding in silent agreement, her hand reaching for her husband's. The love between them was palpable, forged through years of shared experiences, both joyful and difficult, from holiday celebrations to quiet Sunday afternoons. Maya stood before them, transformed by time and devotion, her shoulders squared with quiet confidence. Her presence radiated a quiet assurance that came from knowing exactly where she belonged from understanding her place in this family. The uncertainty that had once shadowed her eyes was gone, replaced by unwavering conviction and deep-rooted love. Jonathan's hand trembled as he reached out to her, his fingers weathered but gentle. Maya stepped closer, taking his hand in hers with gentle care, her thumb brushing soothingly across his knuckles. You are enough, he whispered, his voice breaking with emotion the words carrying years of pride and gratitude. Maya leaned down, wrapping both her parents in a tender embrace, breathing in the familiar scent of home. In that moment, their unity was complete, a family bound not by blood but by something far stronger, choice, love, and dedication that had been tested and proven countless times. The days that followed Nathan and Lucas's departure brought a subtle but profound change to the Walker household. The heavy silence that had once filled the corners of their home transformed into something lighter, more peaceful. Sunlight streamed through the living room windows, casting a warm glow over Jonathan as he rested in his favorite armchair, his face more relaxed than it had been in weeks. Eleanor and Maya created a gentle routine around him, their movements synchronized with years of understanding. Maya would work on business documents while sitting cross-legged on the floor near Jonathan's chair, occasionally looking up to share a detail about a successful deal or an amusing client interaction. Eleanor would bring fresh tea and cookies settling into her own chair with her knitting, her needles clicking softly as she listened to their conversations. The house hummed with a different energy now. Where tension had once lived, warmth took root. The constant stream of visitors brought casseroles and well wishes, their faces lighting up at the sight of Maya efficiently managing both business calls and household duties. Mrs. Thompson from next door would often stay for tea, marveling at how Maya seemed to float between tasks with grace and dedication. Such a blessing, 
she would whisper to Eleanor, watching Maya help Jonathan with his medication while simultaneously directing a business meeting through her earpiece. That girl has a heart of gold. Jonathan spent his afternoons sharing stories from his early business days, his voice growing stronger when he spoke of the lessons he'd learned. Maya absorbed every word, her notebook filled with both business notes and personal memories. Eleanor watched them with quiet joy, noting how Jonathan's eyes had softened, the worry lines around them less pronounced. One particularly peaceful afternoon, as golden light filtered through the curtains, Eleanor reached for Jonathan's hand. Her voice was tender as she whispered, We're here, Jonathan. All of us. The words settled over them like a warm blanket, acknowledging the completeness they'd found in their smaller but stronger family unit. Jonathan turned his gaze to Maya, who was organizing his medication for the next day. His eyes glistened with gratitude and love as he spoke softly. This is what family means. Maya looked up, a warm smile spreading across her face as she reached out to hold both her parents' hands, completing their circle of love and trust. The gentle rhythm of autumn days brought a welcome stability to the Walker household. Jonathan's health had plateaued, allowing him more energy to engage with the family and business matters. His color had improved significantly over the past weeks, and though he still tired easily, his spirit remained strong and determined, his eyes bright with the same fierce intelligence that had built his empire. Maya moved through their days with quiet efficiency, her laptop always within reach as she balanced conference calls with caring for her parents. The business thrived under her careful management, her decisions reflecting both Jonathan's teachings and her own natural instincts for leadership. She had developed an uncanny ability to anticipate market shifts, much like Jonathan had in his prime. In the study, Jonathan would sit with Maya for hours, sharing the intricate details of deals made decades ago. His voice grew animated as he explained the nuances of negotiation and the importance of maintaining relationships, often punctuating his stories with gentle laughter at remembered victories and learned lessons. Maya absorbed everything, her notepad filling with his wisdom, her questions showing insight that made Jonathan beam with pride. She had an asobany way of cutting straight to the heart of complex problems that reminded him of himself at her age. Eleanor found joy in these moments, watching from the doorway as father and daughter pored over contracts and spreadsheets. She noticed how Maya's confidence had grown, how she carried herself with the same quiet dignity that had always marked Jonathan's presence in the business world. The transformation from the shy orphan to this capable young woman still amazed her daily. The stream of visitors brought new perspectives on Maya's impact. Old business associates would stop by, their initial skepticism melting away as they witnessed her capabilities firsthand. Several had already started approaching her directly with new opportunities and partnerships. She has your touch, Jonathan, remarked Richard Thompson, a longtime friend and business partner during one such visit. The way she handled the merger last week, remarkable. She's got that same instinct for the right moment. Jonathan's eyes sparkled with pride as he nodded in agreement. She sees things I never did at her age, he replied, watching Maya expertly handle a phone call in the corner of the room. Her voice carried the perfect blend of authority and warmth that had taken him years to master. The house itself seemed to reflect their contentment, sunlight streaming through windows that Eleanor kept spotless, fresh flowers appearing regularly on side tables, Maya's touch to brighten their days. Photographs of the three of them now lined the hallways marking their journey together. The shadow of past conflicts had lifted, replaced by a sense of purpose and unity that strengthened them all. As evening approached, they gathered on the porch, watching the sun paint the sky in soft oranges and pinks. Jonathan sat in his favorite outdoor chair, Eleanor beside him, while Maya perched on the porch steps. A gentle breeze carried the scent of Eleanor's roses, and somewhere in the distance, a bird sang its evening song. The moment felt perfect, peaceful in a way they had all longed for, but never quite expected to find. You've made this family stronger than I ever imagined, Jonathan said softly to Maya, his voice carrying the weight of years of pride and gratitude. His hand found Eleanor's, squeezing it gently. Maya turned to them both, tears welling in her eyes as she responded, It's all because of you both. 
Her voice quivered with emotion as she looked at the two people who had given her not just a home, but a future filled with purpose and love. If you enjoyed the story of Maya, I handpicked this next story that you will enjoy. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.